He is the Lord who gentle, gently sculpts and molds and makes. I love to preach on the passage about, about the, the cane, the bruised cane He will not break. Smoking wick He will not. He will not put out. You go to, to Israel, there's cane growing everywhere. Kids want to go down and, and build them a flute, something to play pretty music out of. They just go down and cut them a cane. Start whittling on it. The cane breaks. They don't care. Take the cane. Throw it out. There's more cane. There's cane all over the place. Why try to fix this cane? This cane didn't work. It's a weak cane. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Go cut you another one. Jesus is in that way. He called you out. He selected you. He cut you off from the world to play a beautiful, beautiful harmony through you. And then all of a sudden, because of your own whatever, you break and you mar and the music is horrible. And, and He doesn't throw you away. He sits there. He could go get other cane, but He doesn't go get other cane. He just keeps working. And He mends you and makes you finally able to do the same. Kerosene lamps, they run out of kerosene. And that wick starts burning. Some of you young people never smelt anything like that, but it is horrible. It is horrible. You throw open the windows, the first thing you're going to do is grab that lamp and throw it right out the window. It's stunk up everything. It gives no light. It just stinks. God begins to work with you and I. He calls us out. He saves us. He begins to work with us. We grieve the Holy Spirit. We're, we're just working in the realm of the flesh. We give no light. We stink. He doesn't just throw open the door of the kingdom and toss you out. Disciplines you. He cuts off that burnt part. He opens you up. I have maybe even having to crack you in the middle to open you up. Mends you. Fills you back with oil again and lights you. And this is what He's doing with Sarah. And when we talk about faith, some people talk about faith in all the wrong ways. It's not this great faith and then God begins to work with you. God begins to work with you to build your faith. You take baby steps. And little by little, it's like when I talk to people, they say, well, you know, I'm not having, you know, I don't spend any time with the Lord. I don't spend any time in the Word. I don't spend any time in prayer. I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read a paragraph a day in the Bible and I want you to pray a few minutes. Someone says, well, that isn't a whole lot. And I said, well, it's better than zero, isn't it? You know, most people, the problem in their trying to have any spiritual discipline in their life, they go from barely reading the Bible and barely praying to setting up this plan in which they're praying and reading the Word two hours a day. And they fall flat on their face and they give up and get discouraged. In everything, I have found that although many humans and many Christians do not have the patience, God certainly does. And He is allowing us. He will walk with us. He will train us. He will allow us to go step by step just like He does here with Sarah. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive. Power. Literally. Received power. Now, this is an excellent illustration of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, before you can understand that verse and before you can understand what happened to Sarah here, you have to really come to grips with your inability. And that's what... You see, when we talk about truth, when we talk about truth, you have to understand something. You can understand truth here, but it is not a reality to you. You can, you can quote Scripture. You can affirm doctrine to be so true in certain aspects of sanctification and God's dealing with the believer and everything else, you can affirm it, you can teach it, but you don't know it. And it's not necessarily your fault. There are some things that only come with walking with God for a long time. And then one of the hardest things for us to truly come to grips with in a real way so that it actually impacts our life is our total inability. And His total ability. She received power. The power didn't spring up from within her. It's not something she went and grabbed and put inside of her like a battery. 
It wasn't necessarily something she got. It's a meeting somewhere. She received power from God. God commanded something with regard to one of His children, but not only did He command it, He supplied the power for it to be done. And when God calls you to do something, God will empower you to do it. Lazarus is a perfect example. You and I could have stood in front of that tomb all day long and screamed out, Lazarus, come forth. But Lazarus isn't going to obey because a dead man not only cannot obey, he cannot hear. But when Jesus commanded him to come forth, He gave him the power to come forth. And when God told Sarah, you're going to conceive, she conceived because she received power from the Most High. Power from the Most High. Is it not available to you, believer, power from the Most High? Is it not available to you? It is available to you. Power from the Most High. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In myself, I can do nothing. In Christ, I can do all things. God can make me able. He can make me competent. I've seen this on the mission field so many times. Dear friend of mine, Cuba, Rogelio Acea. And he was a refugee when, when, when Fidel Castro kicked a lot of his prisoners and stuff out of Cuba. Sent some of them here. He sent many of them to different parts of South America. And Cuba, we called him Cuba. He was sent to Peru. When he was found, he was basically dying, buried in garbage, in a garbage dump, a drug addict. When he was in the drug, when he was in our drug facility and everything, and come to know the Lord, I mean, he couldn't even hardly talk. He couldn't hardly read. But God gave him the grace of humility, like no man I've ever seen. And he would, you know, if if he was required to teach a class, if if we asked him to teach a class there of two or three men, he'd stay up all night crying out to the Lord. Just his total inability, so aware of his total inability, just crying out to the Lord, Who am I, God, to share your word with two men? I can't even hardly read. I can't even hardly talk. Well, years have gone by, and the last time I was in Peru, I was uh, coming uh, into Barranco. I had just gotten off the bus, and I was walking a few blocks away from the church, and the church kind of has open windows and everything, so you can hear them preach from two blocks away. And, and I'm hearing somebody preach. And they're preaching on John 3.16, and I'm going, who is this God? Where did they get this man? I'm hearing the most eloquent, the most beautiful, the most biblically sound, you know, exegesis, homiletic, on, on, on John 3.16, which is a very difficult verse to teach. I mean, it's just fabulous. And I come around the corner, I'm thinking, who on earth is in here? And I look around, it's Cuba. Is Cuba. Cuba. Where? What happened? And then old Cuba just, he stands like this. He just goes, and just tears running down his face. He says, God has helped me. God has helped me. Do all things through Christ. Do all things through Christ. If, You've come to at least some recognition, some reality of the fact that you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You are nothing. He is everything and He can do all things 